All right, alhamdulillah. We are so pleased that the next speaker has joined us in the hall. I'd like to invite none other than the founder, and many are familiar with this term, of the One Ummah organization, Ustaz Abu Bakr Sadiq, to talk about connecting. Ustaz Abu Bakr Sadiq, you're very welcome. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala khatim al-anbiya wa imam al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahlihi al-tayyibin wa sahabati ajma'in wa man da'a bi da'watihi wa sunna bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen Amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Our dear distinguished guests in the hall, our fathers friends, brothers, and sisters. It is really an honor for me to be in the presence of everyone here, and I do not think I deserve to stand on this podium to address anyone at all. But truly, I am thankful to Allah for this opportunity. I'm thankful to Allah for the opportunity that IET has given to a lot of us seated here. And I will start by mentioning myself personally before going into this presentation I've been given to make today, inshallah. As a young boy, and I know a lot of us here had gone through the book, The Young Muslim. This was maybe the very first book on Islam I came across that made something as powerful as Salah look very easy and simple to perform something as important as the recitation of the Quran look very easy to take part in and to enjoy doing it as well. IET has touched so many lives and it started as a spark from a family and subhanAllah a family that I have grown to become very envious of and always look forward to being in their presence. May Allah bless them and elevate them. May Allah have mercy upon our mother Haja Aisha, may Allah forgive her and grant her Jannat al Firdaus. And for the seeds that she has planted from everything she has done, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a source of rahmah for her in the grave and sadaqat al jariya. My topic, connect. And when we say connect, you know, we're not talking about the digital age, we're not talking about social media alone. This is, yes part of what we see today in our own generation. But connecting when it comes to synergies between Islamic organizations, between da'wah groups, how do we do this? Or how do we start it and how do we strengthen it and how do we encourage this to be done on a scale that brings the ummah together and also benefits the ummah as well? One thing we started in one ummah, and a brief of what one ummah is or who one ummah are, were a group of about four organizations that came together to form this group. And these four organizations, Light of the Ummah, Women in Da'wah, Muslim or Global, iMedia, all of them have very different areas of specialization, what they focus on in Da'wah. But we all came together over five years ago to start this organization and alhamdulillah by Allah's help because of that strength we or that bond we had together as a group we've been able to achieve much more than what we would have done if we were all on our separate or within our own organization separately the main thing that drove this was one our sincerity and focus this was the very first and the second was knowing that we had the same ideas, the same, the same ideologies of what we wanted to achieve, how we wanted to achieve that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and from amongst you there should rise a group that calls others to performing or for, um, enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil. This was the main focus we had as a group and coming together to form the organization One Ummah, we were able to build that bond with the hope that in the next few years, maybe 10 years, 
what we would cover not just within Nigeria, but the entire Africa and hopefully the globe as well. Something that made us very, very happy at, the, at that time was being able to partner with not just organizations in Nigeria, but organizations outside Nigeria as well. And so we worked with groups in Malaysia, in the UK, all with the aim of achieving one primary thing, and that is spreading the right message and understanding of Islam, especially amongst the youth. With this, and with Allah's help and guidance, and also with a lot of advice from our elders, because as a group, you would always, or naturally, there would always be those who have existed longer than you, who have gone through the trials or through the difficulties involved in da'wah, and they can advise you on things that would help better and make a greater impact in the lives of those whom you want to make that impact in. We work closely with them, especially with the Sultan. May Allah have mercy on him and strengthen him as well. And all of that culminated in the successes that we've had over the years, and we hope to build on that to even do greater things. Obviously, there is one very clear thing when it comes to addressing differences, because as naturally you work as organizations, you would naturally have differences. There might be differences of opinion. There might be differences in terms of your understanding of a thing. Our differences did not make us have any rancor between ourselves, no. Instead, what it did is that we learned to respect each other's differences and work together regardless of those differences. And that is also another important thing in our work and in connecting and working with other organizations. You will all not have the same ideas and ideals. You will all not practice the same way. Even in standing in Salah, you could observe Salah differently, but that primary focus of the impact you want to make must always be there. This must be your foundation. A typical example I'd want to give, and although this is slightly outside of our organizations or our, our groups, it's really more about how differences can be a source of either breaking or bringing people together. I was once in a masjid, uh, the Anur Masjid in Abuja, and it was during the month of Ramadan, and there was this brother from Syria who used to come to the masjid, and he would come to observe Salat al-Tarawi in the masjid. And when he would stand to observe Salah, he would stand without his feet touching the person standing next to him. And so during this, every time he would stand in Salah, the person who would stand next to him would try to put their feet close to his and he would pull his away. And he would go closer and he would pull his away. Until the brother stood like this in Salah and the man still put his feet away. And after Salah, he came and met me and said, look, we have a racist in our midst. And he got very angry and very upset. And I calmly spoke to him and during the Salah, I got up to address the crowd and say, look, we have people who have differences when it comes to standing in Salah based on the opinions of schools of thought. You have the Hanafi school of thought, school of thought who do not believe that your feet must touch each other while standing in solar. It doesn't mean your solar is invalid. What they refer to mostly is for the shoulders to stand in solar, and if you do this, then your solar, your solar is okay. After I finished this speech with the brothers, this particular man from Syria got up, came to me and hugged me and thanked me and said that this was the problem that he has been having with everyone he met with, but with this explanation, most would understand. Knowing that we have differences, it's easier when you understand where they are from and when you respect them, even if they do not align with your thought completely. But one thing we must never defer on. We must never defer on Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is never any, we never defer on this. This is our foundation. 
And this is what we hold to build upon till we return to our maker. And we ask that may Allah accept this from us all as well. And finally, recognizing that every individual, every organization, every person has something or a role to play and something to give and thanking them even after, showing gratitude and appreciation afterwards. You're doing it, yes, it's for the sake of Allah. But there is something that as a human being, whenever you are appreciated for something you have done, it gives you the strength to even want to do more. You are not doing it because of the appreciation. You are doing it for Allah. But once there is a sign of appreciation for something you have done right or something you have done to make this impact, it, give, it gladdens the heart and it gives you the strength and the push to do more. So always we appreciate from the biggest to the littlest and there is never anything little in doing this work or in doing da'wah work. Every effort made is an effort that we must always appreciate no matter what. These are the few things I would want to share with us all regarding how we connect or how to build this connect between organizations based on what we have experienced with one ummah. And I know that IET has even done far greater than this. I respect this organization so much because for a very long time, I had seen the impact on a global scale, not even just within Nigeria, but on a global scale of what IET has been doing. From South Africa to Malaysia, these are countries that when we visited and we engaged with some of the people, the very first thing they would say to us or the very first words that would come out of, of, their, of their lips were, how is IET? How is the Lemu family? That was something that always warmed my heart. They always had very good words to share about the family and about the structure that has been built in this country by the organization. So I thank them very much for setting the pace for collaborative efforts between organizations, and I pray that everything we do would be a source of goodness for us all, and may it be a source of goodness for them as well. Barakallahu feekum, wa jazakumullah khayran, wa ahsanullahu ilaykum, aquli qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum, wa assalamu alaykum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khairan. Ustaz Abu Bakar Sadiq, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.